All right. Uh, well, welcome everyone to the final session of the day. Uh, so this is going to be a very interesting session with uh, talks on algorithms and complexity. So the first talk will be by Amin Shiraz Gilani from the University of Maryland. Uh, he's going to tell us about quantum algorithms and the power of forgetting. Um, so I mean, you have uh, the floor is yours. So please take it away. Uh, thank you. Um, so my name is Amin. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, quantum algorithms and the power of forgetting. And this is joint work uh, with my advisors, Andrew Charles and Matt Kudron. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so what do we mean by um, by this by this notion of the power of forgetting? Like, what is our motivation? What is our motivating question? What are we looking for? Uh, so so we are looking for an auricular problem um, that has no efficient classical algorithm, but has an efficient quantum algorithm, uh, and it also has a short classical certificate that could be fed in to an efficient classical verifier algorithm that would tell you that whether uh, a given solution is actually a solution or not. Um, so it so uh, so in other words, it means that it can be uh, efficiently verified. It, uh, any solution could be efficiently verified classically, uh, but we demand that there's no efficient quantum algorithm that gives you such a certificate. So, so in other words, what we are looking for is is a, is a problem where there is a quantum advantage. But if you ask a quantum computer to give you um, sufficient information that could be given to a classical algorithm that could verify what it's doing, uh, then uh, then uh, uh, then the quantum computer loses its exponential advantage. So, is there any such problem? So, maybe uh, before uh, before trying to uh, find so. Uh, uh, find or like uh, construct such problems. Maybe we should look at the literature and see uh, if it's already known. If there are if there if there is such problem that already satisfies this criteria. Um, so how about the abelian hidden subgroup problem? Uh, well, no, um, it doesn't satisfy this fourth criteria uh, because there is an efficient quantum algorithm that finds a succinct description of the of the abelian hidden subgroup. So can can this problem be be the four relation problem? Uh, well, no, because since correlation is not in NP, there is no short classical certificate. So this third condition is not satisfied uh, by correlation. Um, how about the valid tree exit finding problem? Um, well, maybe. So let's explore. Uh, so I will describe uh, the valid tree problem, uh, exit finding problem before I get into our results. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll first start with, uh, with the valid tree graph. Uh, so a valid tree graph is just a, um, um, it's just simply a graph that is formed by taking two um, balanced binary trees and then joining the leaves in a random cycle such that each leaf uh, of the left binary tree is joined to two leaves of the right binary tree and vice versa. Um, in order to concretely define a problem, we will need to uh, describe some colorings and sub labelings of this graph. So uh, since it is a bipartite graph with degree at most three, um, it can be edge colored using using three colors. And so we, and so we'll assume that it is edge colored using three colors. Um, and and we also want uh, each vertex to be labeled by a two n length string. Um, 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 it is possible to label the vertices here by just n plus two length strings, but we don't want that because because then it becomes um, kind of e uh, um, uh, 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 but we don't want that because we want uh, any classical guessing algorithm uh, to be not be able to uh, guess any vertex label with with more than exponentially small probability. Uh, we will have auricular access to this graph. So an oracle will, will consist of three auricular functions, one for each color. And uh, and this simply does what you think it will. So it just takes a... It's a uh, uh, so for instance, the red oracle just takes a vertex label as an input, and it spits out the neighbor of that vertex uh, that is joined to it by a by an edge of red color. Uh, now we are ready to describe the valid tree exit finding problem. So in this problem, we are given inputs, uh, um, a valid tree oracle, and the label of the entrance. And the goal here is to find the label of the exit. So Childs et al. considered this problem in 2003 and they showed um, a polynomial query uh, quantum 
algorithm, which was based on a quantum walk, and they showed that no classical algorithm can solve this problem with, le with less than exponentially many classical queries. Um, um, but this quantum algorithm does not find an entrance to exit path. And so a natural question arises here, which is that, is it possible to find any query efficient quantum algorithm that would do that? Uh, this gives rise to the validatory pathfinding problem, uh, which has exactly the same inputs, the validatory oracle and the label of the entrance. And uh, But here the goal is to find an entrance to exit path. Uh, so classically you would say that exit finding and path finding are basically the same problems. Um, uh, well, it might be possible to guess the uh, uh, to guess the labels of the vertices that are closer to exit with exponentially small probability, but that doesn't really impact uh, the query complexity of these problems. Um, quantumly, maybe what you could do is is uh, like um, a naive strategy would be to take the exit finding algorithm and make measurements at at each step, and then record uh, vertices at each level so that you can uh, uh, so then you, so that you can combine that information to form a path. Uh, but recording such a path would prevent would prevent useful interferences from happening, and so you won't be able to reach the exit, let alone find a path. Um, Rosman has considered this problem, uh, this path finding problem, and he gave a quantum walk algorithm for it. Uh, but but its query complexity is conjectured to be exponential. Um, Aronson mentioned this problem as one of the major open problems in quantum query complexity. Um, so now we should describe our results. Uh, so what we show is that uh, a special class of quantum algorithms, uh, a special class of efficient query efficient quantum algorithms uh, cannot find a path in the validatory graph. So this, uh, so this special class is what we denote by genuine and rooted. Uh, so let's look at, look at what these special algorithms are. Um, so informally, a genuine algorithm uh, is an algorithm that only provides meaningful vertex labels as inputs to the validatory uh, to the validatory oracle. Um, so, so basically, here what we want uh, is is to is to uh, ensure uh, that our algorithm only uh, uses the oracle uh, to locally traverse the graph. Uh, so classically, it is easy to do that. We just this allow uh, any classical algorithm to not guess uh, any vertex label, but but quantumly it is not so clear. So we do this by restricting our attention to a gate set that we believe characterizes genuine behavior, and 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 we note that uh, the exit finding algorithm and the path finding algorithm uh, that we mentioned above can be easily implemented using genuine algorithms. Um, another class of algorithms that we consider are what we call rooted algorithms. Um, so we say that an algorithm for pathfinding is rooted if it always maintains at least one path from the entrance to every vertex appearing in its state. So um, um, we formalize this by ensuring that every basis state of our state at each step uh, corresponds to a subgraph of the valid tree graph, which is connected and contains the entrance. So this means that our rooted algorithm for finding the exit automatically finds a path. Um, and it is hard to imagine how a path finding algorithm uh, could, could, could benefit from deviating uh, from this behavior. Um, it might be possible uh, uh, that, um, that, uh, that an algorithm starts from the entrance and gets lost somewhere in the middle cycle, and then maybe stretches out in both directions to, to reach the entrance and the exit simultaneously. We don't discard that. Uh, the, the possibility, but um, but it seems very uh, but it seems implausible. Uh, so we'll give a very brief overview of the structure of our proof. Um, so what we do is we take uh, any any genuine rooted quantum algorithm that makes uh, Q queries, and uh, we use that to construct a non-adaptive classical algorithm that approximately simulates it. Uh, with only a polynomial overhead in the number of queries. And then we show that any classical algorithm um, in this class will not be able to find the exit or a cycle uh, with more than exponentially small probability. Uh, so here I would like to note uh, that, that, that our result is with respect to a three-colored oracle. Um, so the class, uh, um, Charles et al. also showed a classical hardness result. 
but their result is for the colorless article, uh, or maybe you can say a locally constructible coloring. Uh, so, so in their hardness result, they uh, they crucially use the fact that you can change the colors of edges without changing the colors of any other edges in the graph. But in a three-colored oracle, uh, if we change a color of an edge, you might have to uh, because there are there might be global correlations between between colors of edges. So you might have to color change the color of many edges in order to change the color of one edge. So uh, this structure could be used by a classical algorithm to come up with a faster algorithm uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to solve this problem um, efficiently. But we show that that it is not the case. And, uh, and uh, is, it is easy to see that one and two imply the hardness of efficiently uh, finding the exit or a path for genuine rooted quantum algorithms. Uh, so we will briefly describe some of the ideas uh, that we have in our proof. Uh, so before we do that, we look at the notion of addresses. So an address is just simply a sequence of colors. Um, um, a sequence of colors uh, can be called an address for a vertex. Uh, if we start at the entrance and if we follow uh, that sequence of colors, uh, we end up at, at that particular vertex. Um, so, so you can see, uh, uh, so you can see that each address corresponds to only one vertex. You can you can follow like uh, uh, um, um, you can follow a sequence of colors, and you you will end up at one vertex. But but each vertex uh, may have many addresses. Uh, so in other words, there might be many paths from the entrance that goes to that vertex. Um, and now we describe the notion of of the address tree. So it might look. Um, slightly complicated at first, but it's not that complicated. It's it's basically like a binary tree. Uh, and its depth is Q, where Q is the is the is the query complexity of the given genuine rooted quantum algorithm. And so here if you see, if, if you just focus your attention on the left hand side of the graph, it is basically a binary tree. Uh, and and each vertex label um, is basically uh, the shortest path that you need to take from the root of this tree to get to that vertex. So for instance, here RB means that this vertex is the blue neighbor of the red neighbor of the root of this tree. And on the right-hand side, uh, we have some, some, uh, some complicated connections, but we don't need to talk about it since, since this is, these are there just to, uh, just to handle edge cases. Uh, the, the only degree of freedom in this graph uh, is, in the, uh, is in the color um, of, of the edge that, that connects the root to this complicated graph. And this color is basically the color such that there is no edge of, of this color connected to the entrance in the valid tree graph. So we can we can determine this uh, um, by making only two queries to the valid tree oracle. Um, um, in particular, we just ask the entrance for, for two of its neighbors and if we, uh, and, 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 and this will give us enough information to determine uh, which color is uh, um, which color does not have an edge that is incident to to the entrance? Uh, and so we can also imagine that we have an address tree oracle, even though uh, even though most of this tree is determined. The only, uh, as I said, the only free, the only freedom here is is in the is in deciding the colors of these edges. Um, um, and uh, as I mentioned, that this can be computed by making two queries to the valid tree oracle. Um, so let us describe now uh, our classical simulation algorithm. So what we do is is we begin with the initial state uh, where we just have um, uh, have stored the address of the root uh, of the address tree, and we have some ancillary registers uh, uh, that could be used. Um, by a classical simulation, um, yeah. Uh, so what we basically do is uh, we run the given genuine rooted quantum algorithm uh, using the address tree oracle instead of the valid tree oracle. So we don't have to like make 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 any queries after we have made the two queries that we did to 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 determine the address, and we denote by phi the the final resulting state, and then we measure all the registers of phi. So we get a bunch of addresses, and a natural thing to do here would be just to convert those addresses into into the vertex labels of the valid tree graph. So we do this by making some queries to the valid tree oracle. But since there are only polynomially many uh, addresses, each of length polynomial, 
we only need to make polynomially many queries to the validatory oracle. And then we simply output the resulting vertex labels. Uh, so what is the intuition behind this algorithm? Why would this work? Uh, so first, let me state that uh, let me state a piece of notation. Uh, we will use psi to denote the final state of the given genuine rooted quantum algorithm, and we uh, we used phi to denote the final state of our classical simulation. Uh, so uh, so in the case uh, so in so the component of psi that does not contain the exit or a cycle can be um, exactly simulated by a classical algorithm because there is no degeneracy here because because each vertex uh, uh, because each basis state uh, will will uh, will only uh, um, um, will have a one to one mapping uh, between addresses and vertices of the validatory graph uh, and on the other hand the component of phi that does contain the exit or a cycle has to be exponentially small because it is classically hard to find the exit or a cycle. So uh, since uh, since psi and phi are normalized, uh, this means the component of psi that contains the exit or a cycle has to be exponentially small. Um, well, this is a uh, uh, this is an overly simplified idea. Uh, it it has to be it has to be made concrete, and there there will be like some technical problems, and we deal with this in our paper. Um, so let me now conclude. Uh, what we what we did and and how does this relate to our motivating question? Um, so we now uh, so we now know that the validatory exit finding problem has no efficient quantum, has no efficient classical algorithm and has an efficient quantum algorithm uh, as shown by Charles et al. Uh, uh, even though we need to we need uh, uh, we needed to redo uh, uh, this proof of showing that it is classically hard and. Um, there, there are also short classical certificates, which are basically entrance to exit paths that could be easily verified by an efficient classical algorithm that just uh, traverses through that path and sees if it, if it reaches the exit. Um, but uh, there, um, but uh, we show in this result that there are no efficient genuine rooted quantum algorithms that find such a certificate. So if we can uh, remove these assumptions, uh, we will have uh, this this uh, this unconditional power of uh, quantum power of forgetting. Um, and so now I describe some open questions. So a natural open question here is to ask if we could uh, generalize our results to handle non-genuine and non-rooted algorithms. Or, or in other words, show unconditional hardness uh, for quantum algorithms for finding paths in the value tree graph. Um, so we haven't uh, really thought about uh, applying the polynomial method or the adversary method, which are traditional query complexity lower bound methods uh, on this problem. Um, but it would be interesting to see if if uh, if they could give us uh, an exponential lower bound. Uh, and and another another interesting problem here is to is to consider uh, is to is to ask if there's any other problem that gives you uh, this this power of forgetting. So in other words, is there any problem that exhibits uh, exponential quantum classical separation uh, and also admits uh, polynomial size classical certificates, but those are hard to find quantumly. Um, and here I would like to thank all the speak uh, all the uh, uh, here I would like to thank the audience and. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Amin, for the very interesting talks. And now we have some time for questions. Uh, is, there, is there one? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so you have Hi there. Thanks for the talk. I guess it's a sort of a basic question, but how uh, how can we motivate this notion of uh, wanting to find a problem that doesn't have a say quantum certificate? Uh, I I found it hard to understand, maybe because I don't know much about the subject. So why why is it why should we we interest why should we be interested in that uh, sort of problem? Um. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so the idea. Uh, 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 so the motivation is complexity theoretic. So, uh, so we want to know uh, uh, that um, 
uh, that if there if there if there exists a problem that exhibits quantum advantage, uh, but if we ask for it enough information that could be used by a classical verifier to verify its correctness, then it loses its quantum advantage. So how so how sensitive are these quantum speedups and 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 what we can uh, so this tells us that 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 um uh, that uh, that what kind of quantum advantages that we can hope for. So that's why we consider this problem. I have another one. Well, thanks for a great talk. Um, okay, this is. Uh, I think you may have answered this question in the talk, and I just I just missed it. Uh, you, what is the problem that the path provides a certificate for that? access to the exit, like the, the label for the exit itself doesn't provide a certificate for? Oh, that's, that's a, uh, I think that's a great question. And I already have a slide for this. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, because I knew that that might come up. Uh, so the idea is that the like, entrance exit path provides a certificate, but, but you, you, you could also say that, uh, that the degree of exit also provides um, a certificate because it is the only non non entrance vertex with degree two, so you can just simply check the uh, check the degree of the exit vertex, uh, check the degree of the vertex that is claimed to be exit, and then you can know whether it's exit or not because you already know the label of the entrance. But this could be easily um, modified by considering a variant, which would be just to consider two copies of the valid tree graph on this joint set of labels. Uh, and then the question here we want to uh, uh, and and then here we are given an oracle to this to this graph and we also given um, labels of two entrance vertices and two exit vertices and now the question here is to uh, match each entrance vertex with its corresponding exit vertex and for this problem only entrance to exit paths form certificates okay and so the the idea here is that i don't even know which i if i sit at the entrance I can't even find the the exit graph. Yeah. But I can't even find which graph the exit is on. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't just like take the run the run the quantum algorithm with one of the entrance one of the entrances uh, well, and not the other one. Sorry. <laughs> um uh, well that's basically the idea that we want to verify that you actually did that and you are not like cooking up the labels of exit. Okay, fair enough. No, that's uh, that's that's fair. That's fair. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>
um so it's 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 kind of natural to do that but uh i i i agree that uh that it's 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 quite a strong assumption and it might be the case that there that there are non rooted algorithms which which could efficiently find paths okay thank you yeah so if there are no more questions uh, let's thank aming again um uh,